we need to talk about the parallel axis theorem. I'm not going to actually derive the parallel axis theorem. You will not find it on your equation sheet, and you should have this equation memorized. This is called the parallel axis theorem. And here's the way it works. The moment of inertia of an object is equal to the moment of inertia of the object about its center of mass plus m times d squared. That's m and a capital D squared. So this is the moment of inertia of an object about some axis that is not its center of mass. So this is a way to figure out the moment of inertia of an object if you have the moment of inertia about its center of mass about any other axis of rotation. So this is the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus m, which is the mass of the object, and d times d squared, where d is the distance from the center of mass to the new axis of rotation. And again, this is, you need to make sure you have this memorized because this is uh, something that you'll see on, for example, a multiple choice question where it gives you the moment of inertia about the center of mass and asks what's the moment of inertia about some other axis of rotation. You just use this equation. I've seen that a couple of times. So again, this is something I recommend that you have memorized. Note this is only true with constant densities. We had three different types of densities. Please give me one of them, Michael. What was one of the three densities from last time? That's sad. There were three densities from last time. One was one that you've been using since third grade. Maybe fourth. I don't know. One. Say it. One. 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 It's okay. It's okay. He's not understanding the question. Clearly, that's fine. Help us out. We have all sorts of different densities. Eugen. What is the symbol for volumetric mass density met? Uh, rho. rho, the equation uh, for volumetric mass density, Michael? Uh, also, uh, mass per unit volume. We also had two other types of density, Sarah Jane? Uh, there was surface mass density. Surface mass density was the symbol for surface mass density, Catherine? Uh, lowercase sigma. Lowercase sigma, the equation for surface mass density, Travis? Surface mass density. This was volumetric mass density. Uh, mass over the area. Mass yeah. over the area. And the last one, the other type of mass density from last time, Siddiqui? Uh, linear mass. Linear mass density. What was the symbol for linear mass density, Henry? The one part of this, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll call you on other things then. We'll see you about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lowercase lambda. Lowercase lambda. What is the equation for linear mass density manage? Uh, M over L. Mass per unit length. So notice this parallel axis theorem was only true for constant densities. Uh, just to show you this in action, if we have the moment of inertia, we figured out the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a uniform rod. We got that the moment of inertia about the center of mass was equal to 1 12th ml squared. In order to figure out the moment of inertia of a uniform rod about the end, the moment of inertia about the end is going to be equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus m times d squared. The moment of inertia about the center of mass was 1 12th ml squared plus mass. What is d in this particular case then? Stacy? 1 half l. That would be 1 half l. It is the distance from the center of mass to the axis of rotation, which is going to be 1 half l. So we have l over 2 squared. 1 12th ml squared plus 1 4th ml squared the moment of inertia about the end then is going to be equal to 1 12th plus 1 4th 
times ml squared, uh, 1 twelfth plus 3 twelfths ml squared, 4 twelfths ml squared, or 1 third ml squared. Which we already derived. True? So you can see how the parallel axis theorem works. Mr. Palmer, yes. are we going to have to derive these ourselves? You are responsible for any of the derivations we've gone through in class. 